All right, welcome back. Uh, if you remember from the last few videos, we examined the conservation of energy and used that under some uh, idealized assumptions to arrive at a very simple equation that was useful for problem solving, and that equation was called Bernoulli's equation. Uh, but that equation had some important limitations as a result of the assumptions that we made. And one of the main ones was that we ignored losses. Uh, so that means we ignored frictional losses that occur basically near surfaces. Because if you remember, um, viscous effects are associated with gradients uh, in velocity through Newton's law of viscosity. And so these gradients often are localized uh, near walls or boundaries. So for that reason, uh, Bernoulli's equation, as we derived it before, is not really valid in those locations. It's valid more in the bulk flow uh, away from these bounding surfaces. But still, it's a useful, it's a useful uh, equation because it has a very simple form. And so really what we'd like to do ideally is still take Bernoulli's equation and use that to solve pipe flow problems. Uh, but we can't do that directly because it's inherently not valid uh, for those kinds of flows. So we can be a little clever and say that, OK, uh, I can still apply Bernoulli's equation to pipe flow but I just need to make some corrections to this equation uh, so that it could be valid in this regime. And so there's two kinds of corrections or two kinds of things that we need to consider uh, in order to be able to apply Bernoulli's equation uh, in, 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 uh, in problems involving pipe flow. So one of them involves the fact that the velocity is not constant over the cross section of the pipe. Uh, so you know, remember for laminar flow in a pipe, uh, the velocity profile is a parabolic one. It's a zero near the walls due to the no-slip condition. And then uh, it uh, has a maximum value in the center of the pipe. Uh, so this velocity is not constant. And so that uh, becomes an issue when we want to consider the kinetic energy uh, associated with the flow, uh, 1 half mv squared. Uh, another important issue uh, that comes up is that this equation ignores viscous losses. And so, you know, as I just said, uh, that is actually an important limitation. Uh, so we need to find some way to account for these losses in the framework uh, of this equation if we're going to be able to apply it to pipe flow. Okay, so let's uh, start and address uh, the first uh, the first issue. Uh, and so that is the fact that the velocity is not constant over the cross section of the pipe. So. Uh, why is this uh, why is this an issue? Well, if you look at the kinetic energy term uh, associated with with Bernoulli's equation, you know you can imagine that has the form one half mv squared. Uh, so you might say, well, we can just substitute the average velocity uh, for uh, the velocity in the kinetic energy. So instead of writing one half mv squared, I could write one half mv average squared. But that's not exactly uh, that's not exactly true. It, it's not not that simple. Uh, so we need to actually average uh, the kinetic energy uh, as a whole. And so basically, we need to find a, a, an expression for the average of this entire quantity, one half mv squared, not just the average velocity itself. The two expressions would not be uh, explicitly equivalent. A and we'll show that here. So. Again, the rate of kinetic energy inflow, so if we take on a per unit time basis, uh, we can say that's one half m dot v squared, where m dot is the mass flow rate, mass per unit time. So then to get an average, uh, right, we can just uh, integrate this over the cross-sectional area. So the average of uh, this uh, of m dot, which is rho v dot n, times one half v squared. And remember, the magnitude of the velocity is v dot n because we're talking about the component of the velocity that's actually passing through the surface. Uh, so this is equivalent to v dot n squared. So the integral of this equation on the left-hand side, we can say, all right, that's equal to 1 half v squared, v average squared, times the integral of rho v dot n. And since the average velocity is a constant, we could factor it out of the integral. But we know that this isn't exactly true, right? This isn't the definition of the average velocity, but we can say that the two are equal if we use a correction factor to account for any differences. So basically we're saying that the average of the kinetic energy uh, expressed here 
uh, as, a, as this integral on the left-hand side is equivalent to the integral on the right-hand side that's expressed in terms of the average velocity multiplied by some correction factor alpha. And this correction factor is called the kinetic energy correction factor. So we want to be able to use this simplified expression. In order to do that, we need to find how to get an expression for the value of alpha. OK, so that's the strategy we're going to take. So let me rewrite uh, this expression here on the next slide and see what we can do. So I'm going to call this equation star uh, so I can refer to it uh, later. OK, so let's think about this for a second. Um, if we recall what the definition of an average is, remember that the average velocity is defined as 1 over the cross-sectional area times the integral of v dot n dA. And remember, v dot n uh, selects for us the component of the velocity that's actually passing through the surface. So if we think about a simple flow, uh, like flow uh, you know, that we might encounter in a pipe, one-dimensional flow, so this flow is unidirectional. Uh, we can say that we have two surfaces here, and the flow is going from left to right. And let's look at this surface uh, on the right-hand side. So this has an outward uh, pointing normal vector, uh, n. So v dot n would just be equal to the component of the velocity in the forward direction, right? because the flow is only going in that direction. So I could say that's equal to u if we assume this is a Cartesian coordinate system. Right, so basically I'm, I'm considering a simple geometry where uh, the flow is unidirectional and normal to this uh, bounding surface. So if I do that, then my integral of v dot n dA just becomes an integral of u dA, scalar u. So now I can substitute this into equation star. So I have on the left-hand side, instead of 1 half v squared, I have 1 half u squared times rho u because v dot n, for this case, is equal to u. And so that's equal to alpha times 1 half v average squared times the integral of rho u dA. Because again, v dot n, uh, for this case, is equal to u. So now um, I'm going to assume that the flow is incompressible. So that means I can factor out the density because the density is constant. And then when I do that, uh, I get the following, rho over 2 times the integral of u cubed dA equals alpha rho over 2 times v average squared times the integral of u dA. And so for this term, right, this uh, integral of u dA, uh, notice that this is just equal to a times v average. So if I make this substitution for this integral, then I get that the right-hand side is equal to alpha rho over 2 times a, the cross-sectional area, times v average cubed. So the rho over 2 terms cancel out on the left and right hand side. And that leaves me with the expression for the kinetic energy correction factor alpha. It's equal to 1 over a, the cross-sectional area, times the integral over the cross-sectional area of u times uh, u over v average quantity cubed. OK, so now this gives me a way to determine uh, the kinetic energy correction factor uh, associated with flow through a pipe, uh, which is a simple uh, one-directional flow, uh, as we've shown here. OK, so now we can uh, look at this and, and look at some special cases uh, that, we, um, that we would encounter. Uh, so first, we can substitute this expression now into Bernoulli's equation, and that becomes uh, as follows, uh, delta p over rho plus alpha delta v average squared over 2 plus d g delta z equals 0, where alpha is the kinetic energy correction factor that we uh, obtained on the previous slide. So this is the form of Bernoulli's equation that accounts for non-uniform velocity flow uh, through the cross section. So this is one modification that we need uh, in order to apply this for pipe flow. OK, so let's look at some uh, cases, some special cases or some limiting cases uh, associated with this and see what kind of values we would get for the kinetic energy correction factor. Okay, so the first case is the simplest one. So that's uniform flow over the cross section. So this means that the velocity is constant over the cross sectional area. So if the velocity is constant, then the velocity component u equals v average. So if u equals v average, then this just goes to 1 
and the integral over dA is just A. So A over A, so basically we just get alpha equals 1. So this represents the ideal case that we already considered uh, when we uh, did our initial energy balance to obtain uh, Bernoulli's equation previously. Okay, the second case we could consider is laminar pipe flow. So if you remember, uh, when we looked at the Navier-Stokes equations, we applied them, uh, or we can apply them to obtain the velocity profile uh, over the cross-section of the pipe. And so we get an expression like this, the velocity uh, component, uh, u is a function of r, radius, uh, is equal to the center line velocity times 1 minus uh, r over the pipe radius squared. And there's a parabolic uh, velocity profile that we expect for pipe flow. So now uh, we have to calculate the average. So we take calculate the average. The average velocity uh, we can show is equal to u naught over 2, half the center line value. So then if we substitute this value into our equation for alpha and the velocity profile into the equation for alpha and do the integration of this quantity cubed over the cross-sectional area we'll find that alpha equals 2 for this case. So for laminar pipe flow, uh, the kinetic energy correction factor has a value of 2. The third case we can consider, which is actually the most common one uh, that we would probably encounter in practice, is turbulent pipe flow. And so remember, turbulent flow is more complex. We can't really, or it's, I guess we could, in principle, uh, find the 3D velocity profile, but it would be very uh, difficult to do so uh, analytically. Uh, but basically, the, the profile is flatter. It's, uh, it's, it, it's flatter than the parabolic shape uh, that we get from uh, laminar flow. And that shape can be expressed uh, by an equation of this form, uh, u naught times 1 minus uh, r over the pipe radius quantity to some power m. And so when we uh, apply this form of the velocity profile, we get that the kinetic energy correction factor has this, uh, has this uh, form, uh, where it's a ratio of terms that involve this, uh, this exponent m. Okay, so that can be shown. I'm not going to do it here, but, but that can be shown. Again, this, the strategy is the same. It's just to evaluate uh, the, the equation uh, here for the kinetic energy correction factor. Okay, so for turbulent flow, the typical value for this exponent m might be uh, 1 7th, something like that. And so if you substitute that in, uh, the value of alpha you get is very close to 1. It's about 1.06. So for most practical purposes, we can assume that alpha equals 1 uh, for turbulent pipe flow. So that's very convenient because uh, this is the case that we would be most likely to encounter uh, in many practical applications. So, uh, you know, in, in many cases we can assume that this correction factor has a value of 1 uh, for turbulent pipe flow. But it's important to understand that uh, you know we do need to account for this average kinetic energy uh, and the way to do it is through this uh, correction factor alpha. Uh, 